Welcome to Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the BO and Savar law. Now, the reason why is because we, in a previous video, we had shown you already how to find the magnetic field caused by a single charged particle moving through space. And the fact that a single charged particle moves through space causes magnetic field to exist all the way around that particle. So if you take your thumb and point in the direction of the motion of the particle, especially since it's a positive particle, we use the right hand rule, then your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field, which means as the particle is moving through space, there'll be the existence of a magnetic field around that moving particle, which is kind of interesting. Also, we realize that close to the particle, the magnetic field will be the strongest, farther away the magnetic field particle will be the weakest. And if we take any arbitrary point like that right there, we can then see that this is the position vector from the momentary position of the particle to the location of interest. Notice that we use the right hand rule. The B field can be determined by knowing that the current, the charged particle moves in the direction of the thumb. The magnetic field is in the direction of the fingers. And notice because it's on the bottom side, you can see that the fingers point into the board. Magnetic field is into the board. And the magnitude of the field caused by that single particle is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi. Remember, mu sub naught is the permittivity of free space times the charge of the particle times the velocity of the particle crossed by the unit vector in the position direction divided by that distance quantity squared. So, Biel and Savard took that concept and wonder, wondered if they could then expand that equation to a current segment. They want to be able to figure out the magnetic field caused by a current in a wire. And so they wanted to say, what if we have an infinitesimally small little segment called DL that carries a current I? Can we find the magnetic field at this location in the very same way that we did with this equation right there? Keeping in mind that the current density inside the conductor is equal to the current divided by the cross-sectional area, which is equal to the number of free charges available per unit volume, charge per unit volume in the conductor. Q is the charge in each charged particle, and V sub D is the drift velocity of the velocity of the particles in that conductor. So we should be able to, by defining the amount of charge in this small little segment as dQ. Oop, wow. So this has dq amount of charge in there, and dq would be equal to the number of charged particles per unit volume times the charge on each particle times the dv. So the, the number of particles per unit volume times the volume should give you the number of particles in there, and if you then multiply that number by the charge in each particle, you get the total charge within this region right there, that very small, infinitesimally long uh, uh, size uh, conductor, piece of the conductor. All right, now we realize that dv is simply going to be the cross-sectional area times the length. So this can be written as n times q times the cross-sectional area times dl. And that would then be the amount of charge inside that small little length of conductor. Remember, it's infinitesimally small. So then they took the a conclusion that if this is infinitesimally small, that dq would then really be the same as the q over here, the single charged particle right there, which means we can then replace that q by dq. And so we can say that the magnetic field right there, which is now called the db, a small amount of the magnetic field represented by the small amount of current element right there, we can then say that db is therefore equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times dq times the velocity, and this would now be the drift velocity crossed by the unit vector in the direction of the point of interest divided by the distance to position squared. And now, of course, whoop, let me make that a little better r right there. Now, of course, we can replace dq by, by dq is equal to, which means that the magnetic field at the location is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times dq and now dq is going to be written as n times q times cross-sectional area times dl. Now we're going to have times velocity crossed r times r squared. Now notice it's kind of strange to be talking about the drift velocity when we're talking about a current element. So now we have to relate somehow the current to the drift velocity. And of course we have that equation right there. We can then say that from this, we can say that the drift velocity is equal to the current divided by the cross-sectional area times the 
charge density times the charge on each charge particle. So we can now replace the drift velocity by that right there. And instead of having V cross R, we can simply have DL cross R because V, the direction of V and the direction of DL is exactly the same. So that means we're going to now write that DB is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times N Q cross sectional area times, instead of writing VD, I'm going to put the DL over here, cross R, because remember, the direction of DL is the same as the direction of the velocity of the charges. And instead of V, v drift, I'm going to replace V drift by I divided by, and let me put the denominator here, cross sectional area times the density of the charges times the charge of each charge. So instead of VD, I have this. I still need my R squared. And let's see, am I forgetting anything else? No, everything else is there. Now, notice that A and Q and QA, that cancels out. And so therefore, we concluded, or they concluded, we can simply say and wonder, go, wow, they were smart when they did this. So now they say that DB, the amount of magnetic field right there at that location, the magnitude of that, is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the current in that little segment, I, multiplied times the cross product of the small little line segment, DL, with the direction to the point of interest. So that would be DL cross the R unit vector divided by R squared. And this here is therefore known as the B.O. and Savart law. It was simply a clever way of realizing that if you can find the magnetic field for a single charged particle here, we should be able to expand that concept to find the magnetic field of a small little current element. And of course, the beauty of this is if we have a long wire that carries a current in any shape or form in any direction, we can simply multiply each little portion of that line segment times the direction of the point of interest of course, that will be dl cross times r times the sine of the angle between the two directions, multiply times the other factors, and then we just simply add up the, all those segments and find the total magnetic field caused by a length of wire carrying a current. So that's why this equation was so important and so critical in our ability to find the magnetic field caused by currents in wires in any shape. And that's why the Bios of our law is so important. Now, we'll see an example of how we apply that and you see how beautiful that, that equation is for us. All right, that's how we do that, the BON and Savarlaw.